Hello and welcome to Flexing Media. This is today's news brought to you by Chelsea Quinson. Now the headlines. Graham says Biden deserves a cabinet if he wins. Tamar police alert public on church robbery activities. Banker jailed for stealing 499,000 Ghana CDs. Election highlights. Biden defeats Trump as Pennsylvania puts him over the top. Stay tuned. Graham says, Biden deserves a cabinet if he wins. When it comes to finding common ground, I will do that, the South Carolina Republican says. Senator Lindsey Graham makes, a, makes his recover, victory speech after winning another term in office on November 3rd. Senator Lindsey Graham on Friday said that former Vice President Joe Biden should have a cabinet if he wins the president the presidency. Graham, a staunch Trump ally, said during a press call that he would work to find areas of agreement with Biden, but emphasized that the election is not yet over. When it comes to finding common ground, I would do that, Graham told reporters. The vice president deserves a cabinet. I'll give him my input about who I could vote for as senator of state, attorney general. There may be some people that I just can't vote for because I think they're unqualified or too extreme. While the White House and Senate majority have yet to be called, Biden is within striking distance of winning the presidency after taking a slight lead in Pennsylvania, a critical battleground state that would deliver Biden the White House should he win it. Meanwhile, control of the Senate is up in the air. While Republicans are poised to start the year with a razor-thin majority, the state of Georgia will hold up runoffs on January 5th for its repair of Senate races. If Democrats with both of those seats, they will control the Senate with Biden as president. Graham made this statement when he gave out his victory speech to the public after winning his seat for another term as a Republican senator. Tama Police Alert Public on Church Robbery Activities The Tama Regional Police Command has issued an alert to the general police, especially churches, to be wary of a new strategy used by robbers. Chief Inspector Didi Zagpasu, Acting Tama Police Public Relations Officer, disclosing this in a press statement, said the modest of the group was to gain access to the church premises by scaling the fence wall and thereafter take security men hostage. Chief Inspector Zach Passu stated that the command therefore advises the general public, particularly churches and places of worship, to be, ver to be very wary of the new robbery trend and desist from keeping monies and other valuable items in their premises, especially after Sunday service. The command also urged churches to mount security cameras within and without to monitor their premises. The statement also called on all residents to promptly alert the police on 0542-719-093-191 or 112 of any suspicions of criminals for urgent attention. And a cross circuit court has sentenced a banker to two years imprisonment in hard labor for stealing 499,022 Ghana CDs belonging to the CAL Bank Limited. Leslie Afoti, after stealing the money in 2018, refunded 128,022 Ghana CDs out of 160,000 Ghana CDs he won from betting. He pleaded not guilty to the charge of stealing, but the court presided over Mrs. Evelyn Asamwa found him guilty at the end of the trial. Chief Inspector Emmanuel Haliga said the complaint was an internal audit staff at the head office of CAL Bank. While a faulty was a bull cash teller with the Spintex branch of the bank. Prosecution said Afoti's task was to go out with a bullion van and a driver 
to the bank's customers at various locations to collect daily savings. It said a FOTI was also mandated to take the money to the bank and deposit it into an account. Chief Inspector Halika said as a control measure, the bank audited its accounts and the staff before the close of every year. He said on December 2018, the bank audited an account in which the convict had been depositing monies collected from the customers, an amount of 499,022 Ghana CDs, 0.10, was detected unaccounted for it, and when Afoti heard about the auditing, he quickly stopped his daily rounds and returned to his office, prosecution said. When officials from the bank's head office decided to find out why the money was not in the account, a faulty bolted. A report was made to the police at Osu on December 28, 2018, which, after which a faulty was arrested. He admitted the offense during interrogation and pleaded that he should be given a month to refund the money. The election highlights in the U.S. Joseph R. Biden Jr. was elected President of the United States on Saturday, defeating President Trump after campaigning on a promise to restore civility and stability to American politics and to expand the government's role in guiding the country through the surging coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic. Mr. Biden, 77, who will become the 46th president and the oldest man ever sworn in the office, secured the needed 270 votes from the Electoral College after Pennsylvania was called for him. Though the race was far closer than many Democrats, Republicans and pollsters had expected. The result also provided a history-making moment for President-elect Biden's running mate, Senator Kamala Harris of California, who became the first woman and first woman of color on a winning presidential ticket. With his third run for the White House, after unsuccessful bids in 1988 and 2008, and after spending eight years as President Barack Obama's vice president, Mr. Biden finally attained a goal that he has dreamed of for decades capping a career in national politics that began with the victory of 1972 Senate race here in Delaware. He was swept into office this year with the support of a diverse coalition of younger voters, older voters, black Americans, and white college educated voters, particularly women. Mr. Biden's triumph concluded an extraordinary election that was expected to set modern records for turnout Despite being held amid a pandemic that has upended life across the United States, more than 100 million Americans voted before Election Day as states sought to make voting safer, putting the nation on track for the largest turnout in the century once the final vote is tallied. Mr. Biden also won the popular vote by nearly three percentage points and with more than 74 million votes, broke the vote record set by Mr. Obama in 2012. Mr. Trump received more than 70 million votes, far more than the 63 million he received in 2016 when he beat Hillary Clinton while losing the popular vote. Voters overcame their fears of the coronavirus, long lines at the polls and the vexing challenges of a transformed election system to render a verdict on Mr. Trump's chaotic and norm-breaking presidency. Mr. Trump was the first incumbent president to lose a bid for re-election since George H.W. Bush lost to Bill Clinton in 1992. Still, the race was not the landslide many Democrats had hoped for. Mr. Biden lost a number of important battleground states where he had invested time and resources most notably Florida, amid signs of challenges with a number of Latino constituencies. The Trump campaign and Republican lawyers have already begun a wide-ranging legal assault to challenge Democratic votes and victories in key swing states, part of a long telegraph effort to call the validity 
of the election into question. Mr. Trump, who baselessly declared victory early Wednesday before votes were tallied in multiple states, had regularly questioned the legitimacy of the election as polls showed him trailing, and it was not immediately clear how he would respond to the news of Mr. Biden's victory. Much of Mr. Biden's agenda in office may rest on his ability to work with Congress. Democrats have maintained their hold on the House, but had a much narrower path to reclaiming control of the Senate. Kamala Harris has risen higher in national politics than any woman before her. Kamala Harris at an appearance in Philadelphia. She was elected Vice President of the United States after a long wait for votes to be counted and broke several barriers on her way to the office. Credit Michelle V. Aggins, The New York Times. Kamala Harris, a senator from California, a former presidential candidate, made history when she was elected vice president. Her victory represents a handful of firsts. She will be the first woman, the first black woman, the first Indian American woman, and the first daughter of immigrants to be sworn as vice president. It also marks a milestone for a nation in upheaval. Grappling with the long history of racial injustice, over the course of her campaign, Ms. Harris has faced both, both racist and sexist attacks from conservatives, including President Trump, who have refused to pronounce her name correctly. The daughter of a Jamaican father and Indian mother, Ms. Harris, 56, embodies the future of a country that is growing more racially diverse every year, even if the person whom voters picked for the top of the ticket is a 77-year-old white man, she brought to the race a more vigorous campaign style than of the president-elect. Joseph R. Biden Jr., in Joseph R. Biden Jr., including a gift for capturing moments of raw political electricity on the debate stage and elsewhere. A former San Francisco district attorney, Ms. Harris was elected as the first black woman to serve as California's attorney general. When she was elected a U.S. Senator in 2016, she became only the second black woman in the chamber's history. Almost immediately, she made a name for herself in Washington with the withering prosecutorial style in Senate hearings. Beginning her presidential candidacy with homages to Shirley Chisholm, Ms. Harris was seen as a potential frontrunner for the Democratic nomination, but she left the race weeks before any votes were cast. Part of her challenge, especially with the party's progressive wing, was the difficulty she had reconciling stances she had taken as California's Attorney General with the more current state of her party. As the Vice President nominee, Ms. Harris has endeavored to make plain that she supports Mr. Biden's positions, even if some differ from those she had backed during the primary. And although she struggled to attract the very black voters and women she had hoped would connect with her personal story during her primary bid, she made a concerted effort as Mr. Biden's running mate to reach out to the people of color, some of whom have said they felt represented in national politics for the first time. This is today's news brought to you by Chelsea Concert.